My level of Quantrix probably puts me in the dangerous category. Um, if you're looking for tips and tricks, um, you should be in the other, uh, should probably be in the other room, wherever that is, Mike. Um, I've divided my talk here into BQ and AQ. So BQ is before Quantrix, AQ is after Quantrix, just to give you a bit of context. BQ was necessary to get me to Quantrix, and after that, I never looked back. So CureCorp is represented in its entirety here by myself and my son, Angus. So Angus, your job is to wake anybody up who is snoring. So here we go. This is Tales and Trash by Kier. So it was a dark and stormy night. Um, Angus and I are based in Toronto. Um, I flew out of Toronto in 1993. The economy had collapsed. The uh, government had changed. In three weeks, I lost $5 million of booked work uh, in three weeks. So I signed up for a trade mission, and Kier at that time was about 15 people. We were by far the smallest corporation represented on the plane. There were many others that were hundreds and thousands. Anyway, our destination was uh, Asia, and we ended up in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. And in Kuala Lumpur, uh, went in, and I was there to talk about GIS and GIS applications in railroads, because that's where we'd been doing a lot of work. And I went to this company called HICOM, and there's a picture of their head office there. And uh, when we, just before we got in, they said, well, we're kind of interested in hearing about uh, waste. Well, I threw my presentation away, and I just talked about waste. And then I excused myself because I was going off to talk to a palm plantation. And all the other companies stayed there for several hours and talked about what it is they did. At night, I got a call from the ambassador and said, my God, they want to talk to you. I said, really? <laughs> so went back in, and they said, yep. Uh, we're looking at a uh, proposal that's coming out from the federal government to uh, privatize waste management in Malaysia. Uh, we liked what you had to say about waste, and uh, we'd like to talk, to talk to you some more. So they talked to us some more, and there was uh, another firm there that I'd made sort of friends with on the plane, at the back of the plane, drinking a few beers over the Pacific at 35,000 feet. So we said, let's go in together on, on this thing. And so we went in together on this, and HICOM gave us a million dollars to write a proposal. The only constraint was it was from the end of October to New Year's Eve that year. We worked solid every single day, 16 hours a day. I can still remember the chocolate sundae on New Year's Eve night. When we handed in that proposal under armed guard to go to the government, we waited a year. And it came back, hey, you guys won. So for a fleeting few months in my life, I was actually worth a lot of money. Because <laughs> <laughs> the deal was that we were shareholders in this uh, new privatization. And you know, we would participate in it. So, boom, move to Malaysia, move the family to Malaysia, get into the first board meeting. Well, the old board that we were dealing with and all the executive were gone. And that's called the golden share. And the golden share was the prime minister who decided, oh, this is a big project. This is worth a lot of money. And he didn't know how big it was, but he just knew it was sizable. So he would put in a whole new board, whole new executive. In the first board meeting, we said, well, well, you have a contract, you know. This is a contract. And he said, and the word came back, no, you guys are the consultants on the job. So you can form a consultancy, but you can't be owners. And he said, if you want to be owners, well, we'll have to talk about that. Well, of course, talking about that means 
15 years later, you'd still be talking about it, and you'd still be funding lawyers, so impossible. So anyway, into HICOM we went. We uh, started working out as a consultant. First year they gave us Kuala Lumpur, solve Kuala Lumpur, get that trash off the street. So we formed an operating company through HICOM, Alum Flora. And we actually started cleaning up Kuala Lumpur. And my end of it was, okay, you do the financial modeling, which I did in Excel on a compact, little desktop compact computer. I worked three years on that. Probably every single day I was there. I, the fact that I can still see is incredible. But anyway, we were pushing Excel right to the limits. I, I think we ended up with 50 workbooks because we would just run out of space in Excel to be able to get everything in there. Um, we got the model done. The merchant bankers were then called in by HICOM. The merchant bankers came in, four of them, and they spent six months. And I spent every single day in a room with the merchant bankers crawling through that model with them. And at the end of the day, they signed off. At the end of the day, HICOM got a $5 billion startup loan. In 2000, after I had left, they got the concession for Malaysia. 30 years, $30 billion. So I thought, whoa, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting when I got back. I said, you know, there's really got to be something here. Like maybe, you know, in North America I could take a shot at this. So we went into the city of Vancouver, uh, actually Metro Vancouver at the time, and said, uh, you know, we've done this in, in Malaysia. It was a pretty interesting exercise. Do you think, you know, you might be interested in it? And they thought about it. It was a totally unsolicited proposal. And they said, yeah, yeah, we, we, we would really would be interested in that. But it's got to be in Excel because that's, that's all we use in, uh, in the municipality. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to have a steering committee on this. And there's going to be 19 people on it. And... Uh, Okay, and um, you know, we, Metro Vancouver, we just, we want to look at all the surrounding municipalities as well. And we want to look at 19 um, items in the garbage, uh, you know, all the different commodities and how they're flowing. And so, okay, we did the project. Um, on the far side, the good was, oh man, at the end of the day, they said, oh, this is amazing. We had no idea this is what uh, we were doing. And uh, said, you know, we thought we knew, but uh, we didn't, obviously. The bad was, it was a year late. Uh, it wasn't entirely all for our fault. The committee just couldn't quite grasp things, and it took a, a long time. We were also at the absolute limit of Excel. It was, uh, it was crashing and giving us a lot of tug trouble. And it, the real ugly part was, as a consultant, we lost money. And in consulting, that's never, ever a good thing, particularly if you have bosses upstairs. So uh, coming out of that, I thought, okay, well, you know, the client liked what we did. We really told them a pretty good story. Um, there's got to be a better way. Cool, wet morning in November. Climbed on a plane. Flew to the States, to Quantrix World Headquarters at the time. <laughs> what year was this? 2003. <laughs> Walked through those huge doors into this gigantic lobby. I mean, it's just it's an incredible experience. And I thought, wow, we have landed at the right place. <laughs> so anyway, we sat down with the boys, and uh, they gave us a tour of the product, and I thought, Oh, gosh, you know, this looks pretty interesting to me. Flew back, said, okay, we're on board. We bought it. AQ, so after Quantrix, kept doing the same thing in waste management and basically went around the world. That's the slate. And in Canada, I mean, we've been everywhere many times over. So, you know, what we found is... Well, we found some principles out of that. Our clients were governments, companies, conglomerates, 
merchant banks, IFIs. On the scale, we did municipalities, some really small municipalities, some really big municipalities. We did regions. We did provinces and whole states. We did countries. And we actually did one quant continent for the World Bank when they said, have a look at the southern cone for us, which includes all of the Caribbean plus all of South America. Said, tell us what's happening down there. So we spent a long time doing that. And me, a Quantrix Luddite. I mean, there I was working with Quantrix in all these places, and Rich is grimacing here. I mean, this is hurting him, hurting him. <laughs> so we have, we've not seen it all, but we have seen a lot. And we've seen many parts in between. So the three basic parts of waste management, if you like, and there's lots of nuances in between, are collection, recycling, and disposal. So, you know, cycle carts in Brazil, uh, little dump truck there in uh, India, barge going into Hong Kong. Uh, there's our Lam Flora truck. There's two containers at the end. Those are kind of deceiving, those two containers at the end. You might not think too much of it, but there's $600 million in infrastructure underneath that because when you put your bag in there, it goes five kilometers down the road, ends up at a multi-material recycling facility. It's all vacuum controlled. So this is in Dubai. Recycling, again, landfill in Jamaica. Here's a waste truck that we found in, uh, in Malaysia and we found, you know, during our analysis, gosh, these, these trucks out here, you know, they're coming back. They're hardly even loaded. Why? Because these guys are recycling as they go uh, along the route, put it a pile it all on top, and that's what they sell by themselves, so that it never shows up. Here's a hand cart in Turkey. No recycling opportunities in Turkey. It's all cleaned up. And now you've got technology really starting to come into the waste game in a big, big way. So at the end of this spectrum is all AI. There will be no more people on trash lands and so forth in modern parts of the world. And then disposal, I mean, you run everything from, you wonder why there's so much plastic in the ocean? There's 10 rivers in the world. That's one of them. That's just plastic every day floating out into the sea. Dapa landfill, 30,000 people live on that landfill. Landfill in Wisconsin, incinerator in Europe and a waste energy plant over in the Middle East. So along the way, some really universal truths for you folks out there in, in the modeling world. Waste flows and it flows over time and it never stops. And waste moves in systems, sometimes in very organized systems, but a lot of times in a system that's pretty ad hoc. And all points in a system generate costs and some generate revenues. And there are no two situations that are the same over time or in jurisdictions. And as I said, waste never, never stops growing. 1.3 billion tons in 2012. By 2022, they figure the world is going to throw out 2.2 billion tons, and by 2050, we'll be up over 3.5 billion tons. So it's universal. And, you know, it just keeps growing. So I'm always envious when I hear about these guys pushing data and pulling data from databases and so forth, and I sit here and I think, wow, wouldn't I love to live in a world that they live in where there's actually data that you can extract and pull down into a Quantrix model and do something with it. The typical situation for us is, yes, we have data, we have lots of data, go and see Billy. They don't tell you that Billy has been catatonic for the last 10 years. <laughs> and Billy is sitting in a notion of data that nobody knows what it is or how to organize it. A lot of times, in some of the parts of the world that we've visited, the middle is not uncommon. Data? Oh, wow. Well, no, that's not part of our mandate. You've got to go out and find it. I have never been in a situation at the bottom of that where there's a filing cabinet of organized data. 
It just does not happen in our world. On the financial front, again, pretty simple. What are the costs? Who pays? How do they pay? In every single system, that's the mantra. In waste management, you have to be a bit of an artist and you got to be a bit of a scientist. So waste management, it demands good strategy, planning and business planning. On the science side, you got to craft business plans that provide an understanding of cause and effect relationships. The art really lies in producing understanding among decision makers, stakeholders, and the public. So you always have to balance those two things. And you'll see that Quantrix is a pretty good tool for that. So we use it both on the science side and on the artistic side. And really, waste management incorporates both those facets. So, you know, we were recently, we've been doing a study for uh, Vancouver. So, city of Vancouver, third largest city in, in Canada. You figure, oh boy, well these guys are going to be pretty sophisticated. They're going to know what's, what's happening and, you know, this is going to be a piece of cake. We're going to get that filing cabinet loaded with data and away we will go. Okay, we get a map. Yes, okay, that's, that's pretty interesting. Those are, your, those are some facilities out there, right? And then they say, no, 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 we, we, that's just to give you an overall impression. We're actually going to give you a detailed map of uh, how our operation functions, and that's the one at the uh, top right there. And I say, oh, really? That's, that's your system, is it? Well, I do a lot of work in strategy. I do a lot of work in balanced scorecarding. And I was in smart draw when I was pulling down a file and then they, I saw this thing swim lanes. And I thought, oh, swim lanes, that's pretty interesting. So we ended up putting their whole system into swim lanes, 66 of them at the, end of the, at the end of the day. And so what it tells us, waste starts out here. It hits this particular facility. It moves on to another facility. And there's, you know, you can see sequences here. We have very many pictures of, of swim lanes. But we found, wow, you know what? This was kind of a useful discovery for us. Because now this is really sort of starting to define a model. This kind of says, okay, we could model each one of those swim lanes. And we could say how waste flows, how waste flows over time. Then we could start putting in costs and we could start putting in revenues. And if we build up these swim lane pictures, Hmm, pretty interesting way to dissect the, uh, the, uh, the system. You know, we, we deal with a lot, of, uh, a lot of different circumstances. And so, you know, people say, well, you want to be in modeling. We want to do models. We want you to make a model. Um, you want to be in waste management modeling, no less. Well, there's a couple of learning things here. For us, it's really important to craft a story. The model itself doesn't, unless you make the model tell a story, um, I don't understand it because I'm an old guy. So I have to make it understand a story. I got to make it flow because I come from a geography background, although I'm an economist, and I got to be able to see a picture. If I can't see a picture and I can't see how this thing flows, I, I likely you won't be able to do it. So on the, just the extract here we've got from a, from a model, we start at the top, we dump in our assumptions. And then everything down through that model, all the way down to the bottom, is linked. It's all flowing, it's telling a story. And when I get to the bottom of that model, I've actually written my report. Because I generate all the graphs, all the tables, that I'm going to just splice into my report and I'm going to write text around. So all our studies end up in reports. So I think, wow, that's a pretty interesting use of Quantrix. That's why I liked it so much at the beginning, because I could really organize that story. I could make a storyline. I could show cause and effect. And I could produce a report at the end. I thought, well, that's, that's great. The other thing I learned in, in my days out there is the elevator ride. So we deal a lot with public officials, uh, boards, and public. 
And I can remember what, one time when I went into a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and said, well, okay, we're going to build a, you know, they wanted us to build a model. I said, okay, yep, we're, we'll go out and build a model. And just as we're going out of the room, comes up to me and he says, gave me a crayon. And he said, when you come back, use this. Tell me the message. And I, oh, okay, that's pretty succinct. <laughs> so, you know, we think of the elevator ride, and a lot of our reports are just a few PowerPoint slides, and, or model slides that can be animated. We're just saying, boom, okay, we can make these graphs go up and down. And in my time in consulting, and I've been in it now for 45 plus years, um, so probably coming to the end of it. I mean, we'll be into these new things that you're doing now, Mike, and those, uh, those gaming applications. But, uh, you know, people like bar charts. They can see it. The public can understand it. You can make those bars move up and down. Oh, they love that. And at the end of the day, you can show them that. They can understand it, and they'll go away happy. So... <clears throat> When I told you about Malaysia, I mean, that took three years in front of a compact computer. Vancouver was about one and a half years. So I get a call one day and say, um, you know, we got this project in uh, Turkey. And they want you over there because uh, you've, uh, you've done a privatization before. So, okay, get on a plane, fly to Turkey, fly to Istanbul. And we met a company there called Sabanchi. Sabanchi is a huge conglomerate. They own everything in, in Turkey. So the one tower on the left side is sort of where they got their technical group. And then on the other side, the other tower is just merchant bankers. So, hmm, <laughs> all right. So they said, we got to go into the first meeting, and they said, uh, okay, in 10 years, we want you to come up with an idea for a billion dollars worth of net revenue. And we want to be in waste management. And by the way, you got 50 days, because we got a board meeting. Uh, so uh, we sat down, and the ingredients that we had, okay, Turkey's a country of 80 million. It's got industry. And Sabanchi, you happen to own a whole bunch of cement uh, places. You also own a bunch of quarries. Uh, you're into energy. And basically, there is no space anymore for landfills uh, in Istanbul. So that was our starting point. Our end point was the diagram on the right, which says, OK, well, this is what we're, we're going to do. We're going to do uh, fuel processing. We're going to suck uh, material both from uh, industry we're also going to pull it in from um, um, mechanical biological uh, treatment. And we're going to put that into cement kilns. Uh, we're going to take those quarries that we've quarried out, and we're going to turn those into uh, landfills. And we're also going for municipal waste and whatever comes out of the residue out of the uh, MBT treatments. And we're also going to go into waste to energy and build uh, incinerator. So we spent 50 days. I spent 50 days at the bottom of that tower uh, in the basement, down in a boardroom. And uh, those were straight days, no, no coming up for air. Uh, we put together a presentation. They took it up to their board. The board said, we're in, we're going. And they're in. We're in the waste management business. Now, so, you know, again, I think, okay, well, that's, that was, that was a, an interesting journey. Uh, another time, uh, sitting around the office, you know, twiddling my thumbs, get a call from Ventura, California. And <coughs> racetrack. I thought, whoa. I said, you know, I thought horses uh, run, yeah, they eat, they sleep, and uh, yeah, yeah, they do that too. And uh, okay. The task was uh, design a little waste energy plant here and uh, do the financials for us and tell us what this uh, looks like. So, boom, there's a little set of uh, metrics that we used. We designed a little model behind that, 
pulled it all in, said, okay, this is what it looks like. Da 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 da. Ventura is now into waste to energy in their in their racetrack. Runs a little thing that does heating and lighting in their their facility. A big project that uh, I've been on for uh, the last oh, I guess since 2006, is use nuclear fuel in uh, in Canada. So we work for a company called the uh, Nuclear Waste Management Organization. And uh, it's kind of an interesting company. So this is a company formed by the federal government of Canada to find a solution for used nuclear fuel. Used nuclear fuel's got to be buried, a deep geologic repository, 500 meters down. Uh, this project won't start until 2045. Um, They've put aside a billion dollars to do the hearings, which they anticipate will start in 2025. So it's, it's a long haul. And right now we're down to five uh, communities, and they hope to have a preferred community selected in uh, 2022. The interesting thing about this, uh, the world shares this knowledge on uh, what's going to people are doing with used nuclear fuel. Every country in Europe is now going to go and look at a deep geologic repository. Uh, in the US, you're just about to restart looking at uh, Yucca Mountain. Uh, Canada, you know, um, we say with pride, is looked at as the gold standard in what they've done in terms of this. So Angus and I don't play on the deep financial side of this, but we play in the impact analysis of this. So what does a project of this magnitude, which has an operating life of 150 years and is going to employ hundreds of thousands of person years of employment, what does that look like in a community? And how does it impact those communities? How does it impact the provincial economy? And so forth. So in that particular project, in the work that Angus and I are doing, it's not so much about the money. I mean, we need the money, uh, we need the budgets and so forth from the corporation to work with it. But we end up doing a lot of input-output analysis, and then we end up doing allocation analysis on, on labor. And I was really happy to hear about your ISO qualifications, because this project is under the most minute QA, QC scrutiny you can Imagine, I mean, every single thing that you do, they audit. And that they have to do that because this will come under just ferocious heat in terms of the environmental hearings that will come out on this. So um, really glad to hear that you, you've got those. And over here, just a few little Quantrix things that we've got, but you know, one of the things that we've got that's quite messy, actually, is being able to allocate labor across a whole variety of communities um, over 150 years. So we're looking forward to working with some people here to say, okay, let's streamline this, this baby, because we are now starting to push the envelope of Quantrix on this. And it's, I think it's a structural problem. And you'll be happy to hear that Quantrix actually just, or that NWMO actually just let a terms of reference for another big financial modeling exercise that they want to do. The good thing about it from that standpoint is I wrote the terms of reference and I cited that you have to know Quantrix in order to be able to bid on this project. So <laughs> there won't be a lot of, uh, there won't be a lot of other bidders. I don't know what your penetration is like in Canada, Tom, but uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so we know that's coming down the pipe. So for us, the, what, you know, the exciting thing about Quantrix for me as a geographer was, oh boy, that configuration is mappable. I can see a map in there and I can take a map and I can translate it into, into Quantrix. The other thing, it's, it's logical. I can go from the top to the bottom and I can trace cause and effect all the way down through every single matrix that's in that 
model. It's also tremendously flexible. And the, you know, the thing that I loved about it was the automate, automated uh, being able to pivot tables and so forth. That's, that's an invaluable thing for me. It's also quite powerful. I mean, it's got all the, it's got all the bells and whistles in there in terms of calculating uh, power. Not that Angus and I know them all. I mean, that's, uh, that's uh, why we're here. And it's linkable. It's uh, linkable you know, to other models. It's linkable to presentations and so forth. So really important for us. So it lets us efficiently and effectively develop, communicate an integrated story. And it's the story that's really important for us that helps us and our clients get to know. And if we can get to know, that's huge. So in sight of the end, I'm going to go right back to the meeting. Um, when you throw out the trash. So something for people here to think about that are, you know, looking at selling Quantrix or looking at doing uh, business with Quantrix. Uh, waste, steadily growing. Steadily growing. It's not a thing that's evaporating. It's now huge dollars. You want to put in one of those uh, automated recycling facilities, which most municipalities do. Everybody's saying, oh, we want to go to zero waste. Those are billion dollar ticket items. You don't do those without a whole lot of analysis behind them. Every single jurisdiction in the world has to deal with waste. Every single one. It now involves all technologies. It involves the hand cart right that you saw from the beginning, right up to the most advanced technologies you can possibly imagine. I mean, huge vacuum systems, huge incinerators, huge waste to energy plants, you know, startlingly amazing composting and material biological treatment uh, facilities. So it's getting increasingly complex. Globally, it's mission critical. So Quantrix, there you go. There's a playing field. So in the end, Akir, you know, we go down some very winding paths. Quantrix allows us to build a model, build, a, build model maps, really, and communicate stories. And that it's been invaluable helping us sort out directions. And that's important, and I throw this in for you, Mike, because you used to play for the, was it the Wolves or the, uh, in Portland? Uh, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you might wind up someplace else. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's why you have to do what we do. So, that's our story. We're sticking to it. If you got any questions, happy to answer them.